I think that now we can start the discussion. So we can make a list of questions. So if you type your your name on a chat, then you can. We know who is the first who wants to talk and ask a question. Thomas Hartmann, you can ask your question. Yeah, thank you. This is Thomas Hartmann from Fitz Karlsruhe. Um, thank you, Thomas, for this great uh, presentation. Um, maybe I may come back right to the beginning. Um, you pointed out that um, any text and data mining would potentially infringe um, this very broad production right. Um, maybe you can explain this statement a bit more. Um, um, from one point of view, from the technical part, is it really so that uh, every text and data mining needs um, uh, a copy? Um, and then what what means potentially in legal terms? Um, maybe one one further remark, more from an economic perspective. Um, maybe there is also the risk of a double tipping. Um, as uh, we speak that we want to do text and data mining on uh, text and data corpora that usually are already licensed. So even if um, a copy is needed um, technically, the copy is already licensed, so wouldn't we pay double? But the main question is, uh, you pointed out, um, any text and data mining potentially uh, infringe uh, uh, copyright uh, because uh, this uh, production right uh, would be infringed. Maybe you can explain this, please. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for uh, the question, Thomas. Um, I think it's a, it's a very good uh, uh, point uh, that uh, needs to be um, clarified. So, from a technical level, um, many, if not all, so the, 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 there are, uh, as far as I can tell, but uh, I'm not a technical person, so more detail on the technical dimension eventually. Uh, um, there are other, I, I know of a few people in this call that can give you more technical details, but eventually we're happy to get back, uh, you know, separately in any case for the, uh, in any other way for the technical details. What I know is that to text and data mine uh, almost any source is necessary to make uh, a copy. Not always, but almost always. This copy, consider, uh, keep in mind that this copy, uh, as I said, does not have to be a permanent or, or, or a physical copy or, or the copy of the entirety of the resource. Even the brief copy that you make in your uh, run memory just in order to uh, run uh, the TDM instance uh, qualifies as a, a copy. Let me give you an example of how this reproduction right works uh, in uh, the uh, EU. So the article uh, uh, of the InfoSoft Directive on the reproduction right is so wide, is so broadly defined that browsing the internet, because you're making a, a local copy on your computer when you visualize a website, could in fact be a corporate infringement. Why it is not? Because we have Article 5.1. So the exception for temporary copies lacking independent economic meaning. But if we didn't have that exception, most likely we would engage in corporate infringement. 
infringement by visualizing a web page because we're making a copy. Put aside for the moment other theories that could uh, justify these uh, uh, activities such as that of an implied license, meaning that if a corporate holder has put his own content on the website, there is an implied uh, permission to visualize that website. But, you know, these theories for how common sense and, you know, logical they could sound, they are not as uh, uh, widespread or well accept accepted as uh, one may think. Um, so if we reason merely on the basis of what uh, the legislation says, the reason why we can make the local copy to visualize a website is because there is an exception. Therefore, if we make a uh, local copy to tax and data mining and we don't have the exception, most likely um, you're engaged in a corporate infringement. So, but I agree with you, here we have to make two assumptions. One is technical, and the technical assumption is that text and data mining requires that type of copy. And the other one is that uh, um, by doing that copy, we are infringing, but that's less of an assumption that uh, a statement of facts, we're infringing the reproduction right, unless we're covered by an exception. Um, so I think that here I covered the first two of your questions. I think you asked a third question regarding the fact that uh, a lot of resources are already licensed. Uh, that's that's what we 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 see favorably. That's what we 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 like in the sense that certain resources are available under a license that allows to make a copy or to text and data mine. Unfortunately, the majority of resources uh, are not. And if they are not licensed under, first of all, they are not licensed at all. Second of all, are not licensed under a license that allows text and data mining, such as often open access licenses, then the possibility to text and data mine it is uh, uh, almost absent unless an exception is available. So I hope uh, uh, I have uh, uh, replied to your three questions. Yeah, um, thank you for the answers. Um, as I am not a technical expert too, I cannot say further things whether a copy is really always needed uh, for text and data mining. Um, I always have in mind a parallel legal reason problem that concerns streaming. And uh, for instance, streaming is usually done with, uh, is done sequentially. So you always have only a sequence of the copy and never the whole copy or, or a larger part um, in copy. And uh, maybe uh, the main um, text and data mining methods will will work the same and then uh, you never have the need for a whole or for a larger part of a copy um, although um, um, it's it's temporary that's that's the one thing but um, I, I in this moment I don't know more to that um, and um, yeah the, <laughs> the, the, the the other point with the with the economic uh, view, uh, double tipping. Um, this this I I didn't get um, totally as um, uh, the when when text and data mining uh, is free till it is now, then it has not be to licensed again. Um, so I. Uh, I'm really excited, um, uh, or, or I'm I'm afraid that we have to license more. So I didn't get your point that you said um, uh, it's already licensed. So and you are happy about this? Um, yeah. So far from my side for the moment. Thank you.
Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, again, briefly, um, the, the fact that it's sequential wouldn't solve the problem. Uh, it would still be a temporary copy uh, of uh, a uh, part, and that infringes. Um, streaming is a corporate infringement. Now, the fact that you can stream privately because it's covered by, say, private copy exception is a different thing. There is an exception covering your activity. Um, in the case of TDM, could you TDM uh, uh, for private copy? Depends on the country because, again, not all countries have uh, private copy exceptions. Um, and there are a number of conditions that uh, uh, regulate this exception, especially the type of use that you make of uh, the work. So it has to be for as the private copy, pri the, the private element of private copy suggests, it has to be for private purposes. So it wouldn't cover, for example, the activity of a commercial entity, tax and data mining. Regarding the economic uh, double dipping, yeah, I'm not, honestly, I'm not sure if I understand exactly what you mean. What I mean is that either something is licensed, so either you know you create your database and you apply a tax and data, sorry, an open access license such as Creative Commons, or people cannot uh, tax and data mine it. Period. So if you apply the proper license. We are happy and we can tax and data mine. If you don't apply the license, we cannot do it, period. Uh, there is the, the economic dimension behind that is not uh, connected to an, a commercial exploitation. I mean, uh, it could be, but not necessarily. If you license your work under an open access license, you allow for any type of uh, tax and data mining activity. If uh, uh, this is done for commercial and non-commercial purposes, as long as the license uh, doesn't forbid it, um, that's fine. So what we are prioritizing here are resources that are released under a, tax and, uh, a license that allow tax and data mining. So here I'm not sure if I see the double dipping uh, problem. So this is Richard Eckert Castillo from TU Darmstadt. I would just like to try to throw in two comments here. One is on the technical side. So whether or not uh, data mining or natural language processing method requires a copy or a full copy depends really on the method. There are methods that can work in a streaming mode and there are other methods, for example, uh, um, the other methods that, that require a, a global view of all the data because it needs random access basically to the data. Um, so that is so it depends on the method how much of a copy you need to maintain in memory at a, at a, at a certain time. Um, but even if you operate in a streaming mode, kind of the question is the the abstracted information that you have extract, extracted from, from the data that you have processed, um, is that under the same license as the original data? Or is it a new work that, uh, that uh, I can place under whatever license I want? Um, so how, how, much, how strong is the connection between the, the abstractive outcome and the, the input? And, um, and an, another, Related, slightly related remark might be um, regarding this this double payment. So if I have already bought a data set, and um, which which have, might, might have a license that kind of predates um, text and data mining to some extent, um, what what qualities in the license would I have to look for? in order to check whether this, this old license allows me to do tax and data mining or whether I actually have to go again to the license holder and basically request a new license which allows new things and that would be tax and data mining. So what are the, I think the, the question from, from, from Thomas Hartmann might relate to that. So like, what is the, 
what are the actual properties that I have to look for in a license to determine whether it, I can do text and data mining. Does it explicitly have to say you can do text and data mining or are there maybe, maybe other, other license elements that taken together allow the same thing? Thank you, Richard. Um, so, regarding your first question, uh, so when the information that uh, is extracted from text and data mining activities um, corresponds, constitutes a derivative work and therefore it's uh, bound by the same license as the original, if there is such a requirement in the license. Um, I, I think this is one of the most uh, uh, fundamental questions uh, uh, that we are trying to answer uh, in our WG uh, and uh, we have a specific case scenarios on that so we are uh, working on this. The easy, the quick answer is uh, well if the, the resource is covered by copyright then we have to verify whether in the uh, results, in the outcome, the author's own intellectual creation, which is the threshold, the test, the concept employed by the European Court of Justice is present or not. Now to give you a bit of more of a contextual example, in the past it has been uh, uh, held that uh, extracting uh, 11 consecutive words could correspond to the author's own intellectual creation and therefore to a copyright infringement. So this is to say that the threshold is probably not very high. If of course we are only extracting uh, the statistical recurrence of uh, a certain noun, I would say that probably we are not covered by that uh, uh, the decision or principle, uh, but a clear line, uh, uh, I, I don't think that um, at the moment it's possible to, to, to state where exactly the line uh, is. If uh, the resource is protected by the Sway Generous database right instead of copyright, or in addition to, we also have to verify that the amount of content extracted, even if we're talking about non-original content, does not amount to a substantial um, amount uh, or eventually to a repeated extraction of substantial amounts, which can again I understand be slightly uh, tricky to, to, to quantify. I think that these are the two main uh, elements uh, uh, and uh, these are the elements on which we are also uh, uh, working. But just to remove any uh, naivety to the what our results uh, will be, um, there won't be a solution saying um, extracting 20% uh, it's fine, 50% uh, uh, it's not fine. Um, it won't be like this, so uh, there will always be an element of uh, uncertainty, which doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to reduce this to the minimum. Um, regarding the, the, the double dipping, uh, thank you for the clarification, sorry for not uh, uh, understanding it. So the question just to summarize was, uh, well if I already possess a database uh, that was uh, uh, acquired or the license for which was acquired before TDM was uh, um, fashionable and therefore my license doesn't really speak of tax and data mining. What are the elements that they have to, to uh, verify uh, that are present to make sure that they can tax and data mine? Um, I would say mainly two that uh, you can uh, reproduce the work in its entirety for any purpose and that the SWI generous database right is included in the scope of the license. So if uh, a license did not refer, as honestly many uh, licenses do not, they don't speak of tax and data mining. Um, 
they identify the rights that may be that are or not included in the scope and what can be done with those rights. Um, I think that's in one of the documents that uh, Open Minded is preparing, uh, we have identified, uh, you know, we broke down uh, step by step all the requirements for a license. But I would say the two main requirements uh, that I can think of now off the top of my mind are the fact that uh, um, you can reproduce the work for any purpose, so the right of reproduction for any purpose. Uh, and that this includes also not only copyright, but also uh, any related rights, uh, and in particular, this white generates database right. Um, and obviously, the right of redistribution would also uh, make a difference, especially if uh, you want to redistribute in certain ways uh, uh, the results when these results or outcomes are a derivative work. There is now a question from Alex, University of Birmingham. How would the exception for TDM interact with other exceptions? For example, when researchers look to publish their output. Uh, well, it really depends on the specific uh, uh, activity that one uh, uh, is carrying out. Um, correct me if, uh, if I'm not uh, interpreting your question, your question in the right way, but uh, uh, the, the depending on the, the act that you carry out, uh, a, a, an exception uh, can apply or not. So it is really contextual to, to what intent to do. So I'm not sure I understand the, the example when researchers look to publish, uh, I think, their uh, outputs. But in principle, this wouldn't really affect your ability to publish uh, uh, any output uh, um, again, here we have the main uh, issue connected to what is this output? Is it uh, a derivative work or not? So to the extent to which it's not a derivative work and uh, as, a, you know, as a, let's say, how I would like to see the exception operate or from a normative point of view, I would say that there should be very few instances when uh, these uh, results uh, or outputs should be considered um, a derivative work and therefore bound or connected to the, uh, the, 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 the license, for example. But it really depends. Uh, so, for example, if we're talking uh, of a database and, you know, in order to produce re your results, uh, you are uh, extracting and, and reproducing a substantial part, then most likely this won't be covered, it's not covered by the current uh, exceptions that uh, we have uh, briefly uh, seen. Um, if the, these results are merely, um, again, how to say, the, the extraction of information from the database or any other resource that you uh, mine, but you're not reproducing uh, for corporate purposes the authors on intellectual creation. Therefore, those consecutive 11 words of the case that we have uh, exemplified, or a substantial amount of a database, then uh, uh, you should be fine in uh, in uh, publishing those those outputs from a corporate point of view. Maybe uh, Lucy wants to intervene because she is posting some messages on the chat. If you want, you can um, unmute your microphone and speak, Lu mm -hmm. Lucy. Hi, Julia. Hello, everyone. I just joined uh, after another meeting. So thank you for uh, allowing me to join even if late. Um, I was just reading Thomas Hartmann's question, and he, he is referring to Article 5.1 of the InfoSoft Directive. And... Uh, to a text of uh, Science Europe. Uh, unfortunately, the link that you provide, Thomas, does not work. So I can't see how the provision was quoted in the text. But I would tend to strongly disagree with that interpretation of Article 5.1 of the Info, um, sorry, InfoSoc Directive, because it, it, the exception there is for transient and incidental copies to allow a lawful act, which does not have an, any um, 
economic significance on its own. And I quite doubt that any court in Europe would uh, judge text and data mining activities to be sufficiently transient to uh, give, give rise to the application of this provision. So uh, I don't know how, how this text was uh, quoted uh, by Science Europe. Another is, uh, exception, you know, you, you're asking about the intersection with other exceptions in the copyright framework. I think one exception that might be relevant would be the right to quote. And of course, the right to quote uh, doesn't give any uh, boundaries of how much you, you can quote. So imagine you, you, you're mining some texts and you want to publish results uh, with some quotations of the text that you have mined. Well, uh, the normal uh, wording of the, of the right to quote would be um, that it has to, to meet the purpose and not, uh, not exceed the, you know, in length uh, the, the, uh, the purpose for which you are uh, citing. So there's no limit in length of what you can quote. It's just, uh, it's limited. It has to be proportional and uh, connected to the purpose of the quotation. <clears throat> so yeah, that, uh, that is about the only possible exception that I could think of that is relevant in this case. And then the downside is, is that uh, there's a right to quote on the copyright side of the framework, but there's no right to quote um, included um, in the database directive, for example. Uh, and you say, so the normal rules will apply. Well, yes, I think the, the normal rules in, in, indeed would apply. Of course, the first question you have to ask is, are you quoting for copyright protected content? If you're quoting only data, um, then uh, it's probably not uh, copyright protected, so you could uh, extract uh, data, but then I mean, you, you always need also to look at the licenses. It's a complex world. I don't know if anyone wants to jump in in this discussion, but... Yeah, no, thank you, Lucy. I think it's a very <coughs> good um, I think we already largely covered most of the uh, analysis on 5.1 that uh, you have uh, pointed out. I, was, I wasn't I was sure at the beginning because you referred to, to Thomas, so I, I thought I said something on 5.1 and then I, I, I saw the chat later on. Uh, so was following the link that was posted. But uh, I agree with your with your analysis. If you, I don't know if you can see the slides. So let me try to slide back. But we we spent some time analyzing uh, uh, the possible, but well, not a lot, given the amount of time available. The possible operative operation of any uh, available exceptions and. Uh, um, we have, uh, well, you know the analysis very well, so I don't repeat it, but I, I share your skepticism uh, towards the availability of 5.1 for maybe not all, but certainly the large, large, large majority of TDM activities, because 5.1 comes with a lot of functional uh, limitations. Um, so the thing that I was, uh, uh, the, the, the argument that I was uh, finding uh, interesting in 5.1 is was the fact that it's mandatory. So I was explaining that uh, the good thing of that exception is that you find it in every member state. And uh, that, for example, is a positive thing, one of the positive things of the proposed uh, uh, TDM exception in the Digital Single Market Directive should it survive. I agree. The mandatory correct, uh, character of the exception is, um, I think, a, a must. And at least it's a good thing that uh, the UK model already has it. I hope that uh, the message will come that the French solution is not uh, to our satisfaction as researchers. Have you discussed the French model? We have briefly mentioned it as one other example at the national level, which, however, uh, it's more restrictive than, uh, uh, than the proposed uh, uh, exception in the Digital Single Market uh, Directive and also the UK one. 
I see that in the document of uh, Europe Science, they, they quote me. This is something I, I said during the, I guess, the workshop of last year. I, I quoted it, uh, Article 5.1 of the InfoSoc Directive, um, but with, uh, with the caveat that they're only allowed if the, if the, the copies are transient enough to meet the, the requirements of the provision. So, um, which is doubtful. So it was you who started this claim? No, I didn't start it. I was cautious enough, but uh, not, co yeah. The, no, but I, th I think, you know, it, it, there is also the, um, I mean, there are many analyses that converge on this point, including uh, the one developed by, uh, sorry, I don't have it, uh, from the top of my mind, I'll tell you as soon as you remember it. But this uh, major study conducted uh, by uh, on behalf of the EU on text and data mining uh, on the available exceptions, uh, um, finding that 5.1 potentially could cover some activities, but there are so many limitations for 5.1 to operate that at the end of the day, uh, the, the TDM uh, instances that could effectively be covered are very, very, very limited. And concluding that study that uh, uh, it's not a suitable uh, exception for text and data mining in a, at a you know, general and diffused level. And I think similarly, the, 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 the reference that you were making to the um, exception for quotation. I mean, it's interesting. It's certainly something that you know. I'm happy that it's there, but it's once again uh, this effort to try to make fit uh, something like TDM in something else because we don't really have uh, the tool that we need. Um, I mean, happy if it works, but again. As, you know, until one, we don't have a clear decision from the ECJ saying that, you know, that's fine. We will always be in that kind of a, a gray area of uncertainty that actually stifle uh, TDMs or any other research activity rather than favor it. So this yeah. is one of the, 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 the issue that uh, we have here. But I know we agree on this point, so... Yeah, but may I just add something? I think uh, if... If uh, the proposals for a, an exception on TDM only concentrate on the right of reproduction, meaning that it would only allow making, you know, downloading the, the corpus of, of text or of data that you need to carry out the, the, the TDM activities, it still says nothing on uh, publishing results. And if, if the provision that's intended by the European legislator only covers reproduction, you will still need at some point to have an, uh, some leeway to, to publish results. And I think that there the right to quote might be useful. Okay. So unless, unless we get uh, we get the legislator to also include the publishing of uh, proportionate uh, amounts of, uh, of uh, research results as part of the of the exception, which I don't know. And I don't see it this happening. No, so as, lo so as long as the exception, intended exception in the legislative framework uh, is uh, centered on the right to reproduction, we will still need um, the, the right to quote for publishing results. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I, so to, to add on this, sorry, the study is obviously the Wolf and Partners 2014 study on the legal framework of text and data mining, um, the study that was uh, referring to earlier on. Um, regarding the diffusion, the diffusion of results, the point that I was making is that, uh, um, yes, we have a problem with the redistribution right, and we have it when uh, um, the result or the outcome of TDM is a derivative work, when these results do not carry any element of the original copyright or sui generis database right, uh, we don't have uh, this issue. An interesting element here is that if you look at the UK TDM exception at, and at the 
um, guide that the UK IPO um, issues, the use of results is considered to be not uh, bound by copyright. Uh, and for me, this, I mean, this can be correct to the extent that results are not uh, at TDM, uh, oh, sorry, not a derivative work of the, of the original either copyright or um, so a generous database right protected subject matter or better a substantial copy of the letter. Thomas, uh, Thomas Morgoni, if you want to have a look at the chat, you can see that Alex has posted a different uh, message after he cannot speak because he does not have a microphone. So if you want to have a look at that. So what, what can you read it, please? Uh, yes, let me see the first one. He's saying that he's asking, so the normal rules would apply, and then he say current project focusing on articles and languages, and then he agrees with the UC, and he says that this is why he posed the first question on, on the other exceptions. But again, he thinks that many licenses may not help either. So it's just comment posting some comments on what you and Lucy have been discussing. Unfortunately, he does not have a microphone, so he cannot uh, reply. But he, he says it's a good discussion. <laughs> and he's sorry about not being able to speak. No, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Alex for being part of the discussion. So are there more questions or comments? Well, if not, I think that after one hour and 40 minutes, uh, we can uh, consider the webinar successfully completed, unless there is anything that, Julio, you want to say? No, I think you covered uh, all, and the discussion really uh, helped to uh, cover all the aspects that maybe were not uh, further illustrated, but then you, you did after. So Any administrative uh, communication regarding, uh, uh, I don't know, any other aspect of the webinar? No, I think everybody knows that if they want to uh, make any comment or ask a question, they can do it, unmuting their microphone. Some of them have uh, asked their question on the web chat. I think we need, uh, in any case, uh, or we have the permission to use all the chat as well, right? Yes, exactly. As I said, I posted twice the, the message, but I can uh, remind everybody that we are uh, recording this webinar, and the webinar will be released with a Creative Commons attribution license. Every and every participant who had made a contribution, posing a question or making a comment, uh, will be bound by that uh, term. And be aware also that the presentation that we recorded will be made publicly available in the following days. Thank you very much. All right, anyway. so then if there are no more questions, then uh, uh, thank you to everyone for your participation. Uh, and if you have any other question or feedback or comments, please feel free to uh, let us know. So thank you, everyone. And have a good day. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.